Right, good morning everyone. So I wasn't here yesterday due to the one centimetre of snow um, ceasing my area to exist. So I'm going to have to purely go off the charts. Um, so if we start with the Bund yesterday. Okay, right. Um, I'm going to go through basically a lot of what Dan said uh, in his afternoon briefing with the Bund. So be very quick. Obviously, we see we had the inside day break. We had the single print holding there. Uh, I can see that when it did break, there was a little bit of a chop through it. Not quite as simple as the last uh, inside day break, but still, if you uh, had a slightly wider stop, you could have had it. You know, maybe a touch above this close. It's 26, 27s. It did go down, but I'll be honest, you know, it, it didn't look as great as maybe all the other. Or some of the recent other ones. Um, uh, the rest of the day looked pretty choppy and pretty horrible, to be honest. Uh, not too many wonderful uh, trades there. Um, it's always pleasing that when you come in after a day off to see that the the market did have a significant bounce off a, a level you had starred and highlighted. To something to keep an eye on. Um, the level I was looking at was this 83 area so I even would have got filled more than likely now the reason I was keeping an eye on that is let me show you by bringing up the chart was this reason so um, weekly profiles put them all together over the course of a week I don't do a five day profile I do Monday to Friday so if I looked here bear in mind we're an uptrend you think downside level should work theoretically this 83 level was the top of that value area so I had that in my mind at the beginning of each week each Monday I take a good look where the high or low of each value is if we're open outside of value if I'm quite a bit outside I would expect the first time to come here to add to some sort of level and lo and behold it did and there was obviously a good bounce from that so that was a very uh, a very good level uh, and I can see that we've we've closed quite a bit. Well, we closed yesterday and opened today. A bit outside of value, especially outside of that this volume area. So it's going to be interesting to see what the Bund can can muster up and see if it's able to to move away significantly from the areas that we've, we're currently trading. Um, historically, <laughs> are we going to reverse? Uh, more than likely not. If we go through. Let's have a look at these dates that I put in last night. So we look at the setup that we had here. So we had a big a big day to an all-time high, little consolidation day, and then a reversal down. <coughs> Excuse me. So here, this was the all-time high at the time. Not really a um, consolidation day such as that, but still, nonetheless, it was a consolidation day, a move down that didn't break the big days low such as this and then we just chopped around and started drifting up again so that was one example of it the next example is 27th of November here again slightly different again but move to all time highs consolidation day downward day I mean okay it went lower but there's no reversal there it's just a chop before we resume the high and then I had one more example of uh, exactly the same situation, not well, exactly the same, along the same lines. Big green day to all time highs, consolidation, bit of a move down to just that, and then just resumption of the move. I mean, we're not, th there's no there's no reversal sign for me. I know it looks bearish, but there's no reversal sign there for me. I'm looking at the stochastics that I do like, and I don't see any divergence. If on this latest all time high, this uh, stochastics were lower, maybe below this over overball band. I'd be a little bit more keen on getting short, but at the end of the day, there, there's nothing there at the minute for me to see if there's a reversal. Um, the, the one thing I will say is that any reversal in the, this bull market is obviously going to be big, so I won't worry about getting on the first day or two of it. You're going to have um, <laughs> a big enough move. In the over like three or four points to be fair so I, I won't get too concerned about it all um, okay so levels today in the Bund I would first of all be looking at despite everything I just said about not reversal um, the 89.90s um, 
little bit of a volume pick up there bottom of the value with open outside the value it's worth it's definitely worth giving that a go I don't I don't see any reason why not at all that's definitely what I'd be looking at and then obviously we, we know the areas above you've got this little lip here or the inside day so you've got between 16 18 there he's single there but really we're retracing all of this we're, we're going higher again so I'm not too keen and getting short after this sort of level here on the downside I know we've got that low there but I'm not focusing a huge amount on that so the two levels that I have interest in today in the Bund is 158.37 now it is a high volume node. Let me just bring over my um, market delta for you and show you some bits. Uh, market delta is not dragging in there for some reason. Okay, there we go. Okay, so 37. Uh, high volume node, as we can see here. So that's one part of it. Also, if we go back to my weekly profiles, 137 there is the VPOC for that week. So, two issues there, I do feel that would be worth giving it a go. The other downside level, that if it got there today, I'd be hugely interested in trading. And it doesn't look a huge move, if I'm being honest. It's 09s to 13s. Now, 13s was a level we had um, breakout there. It was a double bottom there. On this day when it broke down, it, it was a very good area to get short from, went through. And so that was the 13s, which was there. And then 09s is a low volume node. So if I bring back, back up my market delta. It's a very low volume node across everything. So if I look at this one, so this is my contract chart, this is my year to date chart, and this is my past 10, 15 years chart. 150.09 is a low volume node. So encompassing everything there, 09s to 13s is a big line in the sand for me today. I feel it's a, it's a big level. Right, bund over. Let's find the Eurostocks. Eurostocks. Okay, strange day yesterday. Um, again, just reiterating what Dan said, kind of looked technically straightforward. I'm not saying I, I was here, I appreciate it. there's always chop. So, at the splits, uh, break above that double top, nice and looks nice and straightforward. It looks as if it had that perfect retest. I mean, you, when I say perfect, you're getting filled at the price. You know, you, you, you go one tick through. This is what this is what. I feel never exists <laughs> whenever I'm trading, but I, I, this is exactly what you want. You want it to go one tick through, so you get filled at the level for a big resumption back. You know what a great, uh, what a great trade. Um, I, I feel yesterday was the clues were in yesterday from Monday. So when you had the spoo diving down on Monday afternoon, the Euro stocks was just bid for fun. It had no interest. And when it does things like that, and I know it closed high, but it's not doing that for any other reason than it's going to go in that particular direction. So I felt as if if I was able to get to work and be fortunate enough to come and try and earn a living, it would have been uh, something I definitely was in my mind in the morning that I wanted to get long to get a break above this high and keep it going. Um, so that was a bit of a shame. Um, so the open, it's, it's raced away from value, had no interest in looking at that, so you've got the value all the way down there. And that should have been another sign that it was it was going going up. Now when I wrote my notes last night, the, the, the Eurostox actually hadn't broken 30s, and I found it quite interesting during its main trading hours after all that move, it, it didn't break it. But I saw a, a, a very good tweet from Brannigan, he, he posted it. Uh, he described it fantastically, saying that people wondering why the Eurostox isn't racing higher above these levels, and it was up 1.4% at the time when he wrote it. So I can sort of understand why it's not racing up. Um, I guess the other reason was the DAX was about 11,000. Uh, it was approaching 11,000 at this time. So again, another reason why maybe the market needed just to have a little bit of a con consolidation and not completely you know, destroy upwards. Um, 
so now we have a bit of a gap in this volume so we've got a bit of volume up here a bit of volume down there with the v-pot down there and this is all a bit of uncharted territory so two ways of looking at that is it going to need to come back down here investigate the area fill out some of the volume or is it going to be a double distribution where volume or value established down here big race through start establishing volume up here get comfortable with it and make the second move up um, two train of thoughts for it one is yes it's going to go higher because <laughs> it didn't want to be down there the other thing is it's just we're in a bit of a chop zone a big big chop zone it feels like it's about to have a, a bit of a move every way and it, it never really does at the minute so there's two schools for thought I mean you can see this this is just a chop zone I don't care what's going on um, if I put my money on it I feel as if it's going higher but you know we know the spoos is weak so it doesn't necessarily mean anything I feel market delta does show this very well if I can just bring this up for you so market delta showing beautifully the, the difference in the, the volume areas so you've got a big volume here actually hold on tell let's use a different chart let's use this chart so this is the contract chart and you can see the volume distribution in the market at the minute is up there down there so lots of double distributions forming the one reason I would feel a little bit bullish is that it's rejected this 66 is so 66 is is the contract and the year-to-date high volume it's moved away from there I feel as if it's, it's made that move and relatively significant enough that that's where it's going into uh, that's the, the the tone that's been set shall we say right so my levels um, let's get rid of that. Um, got the issue of CQG Delta um, obviously I know Dan and John are always going to say Delta I'm going to say CQG uh, for the simple fact that more of the market looks at CQG so I feel my level is going to be right but it's it's about what happens so um, so 30 I've got 38 which is this spike here back in September 08 and you've got 3474 which is, seems a significant high which is 11th of August I know these are around the dates that Dan's been talking about and um, I don't really know how it exactly coincides with what he's been saying I also do have 68 as a level, it looks like a high volume node on Delta. So bring that up again. This is my bigger chart. Uh, it sticks out a bit there. So if I was to go on the Delta line, um, that's that's that I'd be looking at. Right. So let's put that back there. Going on the downside. I have obviously very easy levels 3404 um, getting close to now I mean I'll be honest I know this looks this probably feels and looks heavy but all I can see is it coming down here and then it's just gonna have a bit of a balance around this area I, I'd be very surprised there's been no volume on this down move um, I'd be if I wasn't doing this stream I'd be about to <laughs> try and get long if I'm being honest around this low volume midpoint lower the afternoon double way. I mean this looks a great little area to get long for this uh, in this time frame if you're asking me so I'm going to try and get this uh, stream finished so I can <laughs> try and put the trade on um, below that I have uh, my big levels 74 <coughs> I don't really see the point of getting too involved a break below this double this double top here these highs if you start getting below here I'm, I'm expecting a bit of a move so the now the, the real levels I'm looking at. I know you're going to look for levels for a few ticks here and there, but I, I try to look a bit, a bit longer term than that. The ones I'm looking at are 74, which is a weekly VPOC. So if I bring back my weekly profiles, um, okay, hold on. Sorry, I'm actually looking at my uh, wrong thing here. Let me just get my charts. Let's 
excuse me for one second. Okay. So, Tho 374 is not weak for VPOC, it is a low volume node um, across a lot of my charts. So, I felt that was quite a significant little place. The volume drop off seems to be quite significant there. If I bring back my delta. Embarrassingly, I'm not finding it anywhere, and I do not know why I've written this down. And I've got it everywhere on my charts, but it's not appearing why. So I think I've got a bit confused with my bund. Um, so realistically, then, if I try and save myself here, I'm going to go 66s, <laughs> um, just because I feel this is going to be a bit more of a line in the sand. Um, and then once, if you get below the 66s, which is also this this value that hasn't been touched. Um, I feel yeah, there's a bit of an open area here so I, I'd be very very cautious just looking for some sort of dip buying I feel any you know uh, 74 just looks like a little low volume node it, is, that's it. it was the low volume node of uh, the bulk of trading for this day so it's not a significant thing but it, I think that the move it could make could be significant and then the 66 is is the the, the top of the value and the um, the highest traded price. So I feel that could be a really, really strong level. But anything below that, you're rejecting this area quite significantly. And I feel any longs could be just for a tick or two. Um, that could possibly be a bit of a fool's trade. So I'm not too keen on it. Right. So finish up. Which is a, a general thing. Just because I wasn't um, here yesterday, I needed to have a little look and see what news came out. I I do think I don't often do. I went to Bloomberg and CNBC just have a little look and I saw them said stocks were up on um, covering because the stock market was hugely oversold now uh, we all know that I mean that's just absolutely ludicrous and that's written by someone who doesn't know what they're talking about the stock markets aren't oversold in the, in the slightest I mean you know it, it's an absolute ridiculous comment to make and I long ago stopped looking at things like Bloomberg and CNBC because these are people writing who <laughs> but being being honest, they're, they're failed traders. They don't know what they're talking about, and I feel as if times have changed, and you know people stopped looking at the FT who are traders because it's old news and that's irrelevant. And I don't feel the the quality of the journalism sometimes about uh, maybe recent events in the market is very good. I mean, upcoming events is worth looking at things like CNBC and uh, Bloomberg, but historical events I don't think they're, they're worth their salt and I, I do firmly believe the lines of uh, is Twitter is ne is definitely the way forward and I know for the younger guys it's it's preached in the uh, in the training program um, but I, I feel incredibly strongly about it just you know just uh, take a Brannigan you know some of the tweets that he comes up with are fantastic and I feel as if it's it's definitely the way forward so I think you younger guys who sign out you, if you haven't got it up already, you get your tweet deck sorted out, and you you get the experienced guys at Futex. You get them on, and I, I do feel as if there is it's a, a fantastic source of knowledge and information that you don't get in some of the financial press because they're not involved in a day by day, minute by minute scenario. And you know, I've said it before, and I say it again. I do firmly believe Futex is one of the most intelligent well prepared well educated trading companies there is and the likes of Brannigan and Imran who come up with frequent tweets um, what they say 90% of the time is um, is right and helpful and there's enough of us who tweet now I mean Adam tweets a lot I, I try to do it occasionally but I get a bit too wrapped up in the day to do it but I, I feel as if some of you younger guys it's if you don't have them on and you're not following people like Brannigan or Imran you need to address that today because um, that <laughs> there's a lot of information there that if you if you miss a day you can go back and look at it so for me it's something you need to uh, need to do all right guys I'll leave that good luck today um, I probably not expected a massive day if I'm being honest so just uh, keep it tight and just look for that good opportunity all right all the best bye